All right, welcome in, everybody. This is The Lab presented by Champion Circle. Of course, with that in mind, you make sure you head over to championcircleuofm.com. Find out how you can support your student-athletes because I think we all enjoy this time as Michigan fans with how dominant the programs are and how much success we've had. Go over to championcircleuofm.com. You'll find out some easy ways to support the guys, support the teams, including these two guys who are joining us today. Really excited. Two of the the best to do it, man. That two, two of the guys that make up one of the best safety rooms in all of college football. We got Keon Sab and Rod Moore. Fellas, let me just start off here. Nine and oh. What's mm-hmm. what's nine and oh feel like for the for the listeners at home? To go. I mean, it feels great, uh, especially what, were we not? Yeah, we were not in last year. I mean, it feels the same as last year, but I think it feels better just because we have a, a more goal that a one goal that everyone's headed towards. And so, I yeah. mean, it feels great just to be not and be where we want to be. Uh, it feels really good. Last year we were uh, at this point as well. Uh, for this year, I feel it's a little different for me because I'm in more of a, a role to help this time. So it feels really good being able to contribute and get out there and see where it's taking us. Yeah, Rod, like I almost I'm curious for a few reasons. Right. So it's Penn State week. So you're going on the road. Rod, your freshman year was McDonald was the defensive coordinator. You got thrown Mm -hmm. into the fire in that Penn State game. Right. Mm hmm. Could you take us back? Because I know we've talked about this before, but could you take us back to that moment? Mike McDonald, if I remember correctly, was a little bit nervous. He's like, oh, shoot, like. We got a freshman in there. Like, what, what's about to happen? What, what, what was the first play like? What was that moment on the road at Beaver Stadium playing Penn State? You get tossed into the fire. I mean, it was crazy because the night before, I didn't even know I was starting until the night before. Coach Bellamy told me, uh, we were right before chapel. He told me I was starting. <clears throat> Through that whole chapel, I, I wasn't even listening to what, what the uh, Pastor Robbie was saying. But when we get on the field, I'm like, I mean, I want to say I was nervous, but I was more so excited because – like that whole entire year, I was like playing at the end of the games, and then I finally started to get my chance towards like these these past few games, and then getting out there just felt real good. And uh, especially the game I had, like I really didn't, I played really well, mm-hmm. and uh, it just gave me a lot, a big confident boost for the rest of the season because it was such a big game, and it was my first start, and I played really good. It was critical situations too, right? Third downs and fourth downs being in the right mm-hmm. place. I'm going to brag for you because um, that year, guys, Rod set a record. So you, you get these iPads and you can watch film on them. And the coaches are tracking that. They, they get to see how who's watching film and who isn't, how many hours. Rod, you were number one on the team as a true freshman, right? You, you No one mm-hmm. watched more film. Is that still true today? Like, are you still number one, or is, is Keon trying to get, make up some progress? <laughs> I, I think Keon might have passed me this year. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I still watch a lot of film, but I don't think I'm number one anymore, honestly. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, they haven't showed us in a, a while, but hopefully I'm, I'm pretty high up there. Yeah, so, Keon, I, I, I'd love to ask you the same thing. Just, you know, being a young guy, it's crazy. You almost don't know what you don't know, right? Things can definitely mm-hmm. feel fast, at least in my own experience. Things felt very fast at first. Um, film helps slow it down, but what – what, when was the moment for you, Keon, that it kind of clicked? Um, I want to say it hasn't even really fully clicked for me yet, I, w- I would think. Um, I don't really know what I don't know yet. I think there's still so much more to learn. So I'm really just seeing how far it can really take me, just working on my craft and getting better each day and learning about him, Mikey, Kari, learning mm-hmm. from everybody. Man, you guys got such a deep room. I, I was just going through the pre preseason prep, and I'm just looking at it. I'm like, this is the best safety room in the Big Ten. Shoot, we can have that conversation about the conference in terms of how deep you guys are, how well you complement each other. You mentioned Makari as a tight end. I'm looking this dude up and down. I'm like, this dude looks like an NBA player. He's so tall, long <laughs> arms, right? What's uh, what's the competition level like in that room? You know, how what's what's some ways that you guys push each other and and um, kind of help elevate your game? Uh, I want to say more so pushing each other more than competition because we all know we all four know that we all can be on the field at any given time. And uh, like, for instance, if I drop an interception in practice, Keon's always on me. And uh, if you mess up, we just give each other that look like, what are you doing, bro? Like, come on, you got to pick that up. Mm-hmm. It's just more so pushing each other because like, say for instance, like at the beginning of the season, I was down all three of them, me and Carl was down actually. And I would say him and uh, Keon and Q really held it down. Like 
they actually made the plays and was in there doing what they were supposed to do. So it's just more so of pushing each other and bringing each other to the best we can be. Yeah. I think we got a really good dynamic with, with all, all the safety. So I think we've been uh, competing and holding each other to a really high standard. And I think that's what's pushed us to get to the point where we are now because how, how hard we work and train with each other. So I think that's what helped us a lot as well. Man, that's the coolest part that it's it's kind of hard to communicate to the fans. I mean, just fans love to hear this kind of stuff, but it's the hardest part to communicate. Um, you know, you mentioned if you, if you drop if you drop an interception, Keon's on you, vice versa. You know, if, if someone breaks you off on a route, I know they're on you, right? Like, mm -hmm. but but <clears throat> you earn the right to have fun in doing that. You know, it's not fun if you're not winning and, and working hard and you're not pushing each other. It, it, if that's happening too much, it's really not fun. Like you earn the right through hard work, through preparation, through discipline to have that fun. And I think uh, wh wh one where I want to take you guys here is your coach, Jay Harbaugh. Because I don't know. Jay's been there. I was texting him the other day. He's been there about a decade now. He's coming up on a decade in a few years. He was my I tight end coach. He was my tight end coach when we got there. He was like, "Were you ask us how was he as a tight ends coach?" Yeah, Jay. Jay was so Jay was like in quality control for the Ravens, and he he became the tight end coach. He was like one of the youngest position coaches in college football. And what I what I respect above all about Jay is the amount of effort he put into everything, dude. Like that dude was so willing to learn. He was. The offseason, he was I, – I had way more experienced coaches, but Jay would come up with all these new things, and he was like, let's try this to see if it works. And if it didn't, we moved on. If it did, we doubled down. What Jay – what was was so great about Jay as a tight end coach is I knew no one was preparing as hard as he was, and it was just simple to say, let's listen to Jay. And the other thing is what I, what I liked about it is football season's really long. So if it's too black and white and rigid – like you can kind of hate going to meetings. It's like, ah, I don't want to listen to the same thing. Jay did such a good job of keeping things fluid and keeping us on our toes. So, um, mm -hmm. man, it, there's just a reason he's been there for about eight years now, man. He's, he's that damn good of a coach. So I got a lot of respect. So, yes, it's on you guys now. I'd love to hear what he's like as a safety <laughs> coach. Uh, to me, I was – yeah, you got it. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think he's really great at it because – how he works so hard on special teams and he's coming over to uh, safety and stuff like that. Um, he's taught us so much, even though he just got there. And I think he uses some of the stuff that he's learned in special teams with defense as well. I think that's what's helping me and other guys become better special teams players as well, because we can relate the two. And he's so in depth when he's teaching things. So it helps us a lot. I also think because like you said, he was a tight ends coach. When you come to safety, this matchup is safety on the tight end. So he knows the weaknesses of a tight end how we're supposed to match up against them, along with, like, individual. I mean, every day you don't even know what you're going to get. Like, mm -hmm. he's always improvising something on the fly, and it's it's always something good, and we're going to get uh, better at it, and it's always productive. I feel like what Jay did was, you know, I feel like a good coach leads you to figure it out for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, a good coach doesn't always tell you exactly what it is. Like, they'll – He'll nudge you into the direction. And the good thing is, is he has you guys. He has Makari. Like he's he's coached, you know, a, a number of great tight end or uh, safeties position players. Um, and, and what Jay does a good job of is kind of putting you in positions where your athleticism and your knowledge and your prep can take over. The tight end background's a big big thing because you guys are matched up against tight ends, and he knows the strengths and weaknesses of that. Well, there's some good tight ends on Michigan. AJ Barner, Colston Loveland, uh, dude, yeah. Max Bredesen. That dude is that dude's funny, bro. Yeah, we were talking to him the other day about how much he loves to go hit somebody in their face and like didn't blink. He was dead serious. What's it like going up, you know, through through spring and through camp? You know, what what are some of the fun parts of the matchups with those with that tight end room? Um, for me, I think it's turned my game around, being able to guard those guys and learn from them. Like Colson, after practice, sometimes we'll just do like uh, releases and one-on-ones and he's teaching me things. I'm teaching him things from the defensive side. So guarding those guys is definitely elevated my game. I think it's elevated theirs as well. Going against that competition every day, you have to, every time you go out to the line in front of them guys, it's like you got to lock in. Mm -hmm. And since there's so many safeties, we kind of argue sometimes during one-on-ones <laughs> who gets the chance to guard who, mm -hmm. but it, it ends up being really good for us. It's kind of the see yeah, the same thing Keon said, but I'm gonna be honest. It's kind of harder for me to guard them because I'm more of a 
a smaller safety lighter because you know you guys run those hitches you're always pushing off oh you know? yeah <laughs> like, i get so mad because i can't like, i can but sometimes they'll get me on on my back foot and i'm just gonna keep going but it always makes me better going into the game like i know how the tight ends are going to attack me especially because me being a smaller body type safety but uh, yeah. i like to use my speed against them though because you guys don't you know really have that <laughs> not like you not like you for sure um man there's an art to pushing off there's an art to holding too. Everyone, right. holds. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. holds. There's an art to doing it. All right, you guys are the perfect person to ask this. So if if I was just 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 imagine I'm someone that has no knowledge of football, or just very basic knowledge of football, what makes a good safety? Mm. Ooh, uh, you want to split it in half? I take a little bit. You take a yeah, so, and and if you if you if you even wanted to, you could separate a box safety from a, a you know a, a deep field safety yeah. if you wanted to go there too. I'll take the box. Yeah, for I think so for the box safety. I think in safety in general, you need to be well rounded. The way we play safety here is not really a box and and a free safety. It's kind of like left and right, so I get to be able to do both. Um, I think you you need to be able to be well rounded, a really good tackler, physical. Be able to have good ball skills, coverage. Um, I feel like you just need to work on everything as a whole and being a really good leader as well. Because if you're not a leader back there at safety and giving out the calls, your defense won't really run as smooth. So I think you need to be a really big leader. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And try to be real well rounded in the game and at that position. Yeah, I mean, he hit it on everything. I would say going to get the ball, like the, uh, more of a coverage type of safety, he needs to go get the ball out the air. That's that's really the number one thing. And uh, being like, if you get put in a situation to get be in the box to make the tackle, you're gonna have to be, get big and make the tackle. But um, along with like the knowledge of the game, you got to really know like what the corners are gonna be, at, where, where the corners are gonna be at, where your linebackers are fitting, where the lines fit in that. Like that makes you so much better of a player because when you know where everybody else is, it makes you go to where you're supposed to be at, at that uh, at that time to be able to make that play. So just to be a great safety, you just got to really know everything honestly, and being able to direct the defense. Yeah. So first off, um, you know, just, hey, you know, if you don't, if you may not know what a box safety is, like really, like if you look at the field, you know, a middle feet, a deep safety is the guy that's way, way back there. Like they're the last man protection of the defense. Mm -hmm. um, the last line of defense, a box safety, you may confuse them as a linebacker. Like they get down in the box. They have to be involved in the run support. Um, so th there is a difference to it. You're exactly right, Keon, like well-rounded. Maybe that's why safeties and tight ends get along because we have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, Rod, you hit on a th hit on something. I'm watching – so I'm watching the Eagles-Cowboys last night. And remember, the Cowboys drove all the way down the field. They're about to score. And I'm seeing Darius Slay. It's like the last play of the game. Darius Slay is in the slot versus C.D. Lamb. And what's he doing? He's looking back to the safety saying, hey, I, I, like you, you got my help inside, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's and and there's trust and knowledge there. Slay let let CD release inside. He didn't even he didn't even bite on any release, and he was just in his hip outside. And then there's the safety right there. Like that that's really what you're saying, right? You mm -hmm. you as a safety, you have to understand leverage. You can't just know your job. You have to know what everyone around you is doing, and then you can do your complete job, right? Mm -hmm. right. right. Has that came up before? I think it comes up every day, even in practice. Like, yeah, especially in certain coverages. Like, the, if you got, we have to fit off the corner at a certain time. So, like, you have to know if the corner is going to fit inside, you got to go outside. If it's fitting out, outside, you're fitting inside. And then, like, um, I would say maybe like cover ones or cover threes when, you, when we end up being in the box. That's a time where you have to know this gap is yours or that gap is yours. And that gap's to Mike's back or the, that gap's to uh, the dime backer. So, it's really just positioning and knowing where you're supposed to be at. I just uh, when I when sometimes I get fired up when we when I I talk to you guys and talk to different guys on the team just because I think it's like the most beautiful thing football when it's done right because all the possibilities like of what what can happen and what you have to be aware of of what's going on and then when it's done right it's like the best thing in the world man it's like oh you did your job hey someone may not have even made the play but they made they were the reason that the next man made the play mm -hmm. and that's when you yeah. guys celebrate right mm -hmm. yeah that feeling is good it doesn't even have to be like a big play made it could be like a change of rotation and how got how smooth you guys did it with no hitches and everybody's job changes it feels really good me and Kari had one in the game 
Uh, we, we had um, the nickel went from the right to the left, and the whole coverage changed, and it went smooth without a hitch. And after – I think we got like a regular tackle or like something like that. Me and Kyrie were uh, fired up because how smooth it went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, that, is it important to celebrate with each other? Mm -hmm. Really important. Yeah, re very important. Really important. Not every team's like uh, – uh, you know, it's crazy. Like some coaches – some teams I've been on, like coaches have to like say it. You know, like, hey, guys, you got to celebrate or something like that. And I feel like it's inorganic, you know. But mm -hmm. I watch you guys play, you know, the turnover buffs. I was just about to say that. That picture with Coach Harbaugh versus the Gophers, I'm like, dude, that's so – like no one blinked. This wasn't planned, right? Like it's so organic, right? How do, how do you guys get to that place? How, how does it – what how does your – how is it so organic and easy and natural for the Michigan Wolverine defense? I was going to say that like you saying how some coaches have to tell the team to celebrate and how everybody's making a big deal about that picture, but it's just like – we just did it. Like, we always do it. If somebody yeah. gets a turnover, we're just like, oh, yeah, we have it for that guy. Get a turnover because I say it's important because if, you happy, you're, if you're happy for another man's success, success is going to come your way. Mm -hmm. And it makes the whole defense want to get, like, want to make plays because everyone's so hyped up about it. And I want to say it started off – it started when Coach Mack was here, I think. I want I don't even know if it started the first game. I think we were a couple games in, and it started with turnover pictures. And then the year Will came in, he was like, what y'all think about turnover buffs? And then we was like, yeah, that'd be hard. Like, the person with the turnover buff, turnover, where's the buffs in the picture? And so then ever since then, we just keep doing it every time. Yeah, I think it was um, – I think it's just who we are as a defense and how tight we are as, like, a brotherhood. I think this might be the, the, the tightest as, like, a family, like, defense I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. Every guy from a, a D lineman to a safety, we all have really good relationships with each other. So when you see your brother win or eat or do anything good, it's like I'm winning as well. So it's a good feeling when you see all your friends, teammates, and, and brothers make plays. I'm curious about uh, Ben Herbert's role in this, the strength <laughs> coach. Um, I just got a hunch that that dude matters so much to the team and the the culture. What, what's it? What's an off season lift like with Coach Herb? Um. He has a, a good he has a really great schedule, but there's times where it's like you could be up for anything or any times we gotta jump in the ice tub or <laughs> he always he Bro. always wants us to not uh not overthink or be worried about anything, just be ready for anything. So he's trained us for that like a, a really good amount. I got one. Six AM. It'll be six AM in the summer. And they have all the rollers out in the um in the uh the indoor. And there's car a deck a, a, a one card at each um roller. And he'll be like, All right, flip over your car, what do you have? <laughs> and if somebody like what was it, Queens one time? I think it was the Queens they had. Yeah, what? it was all the Queens. Whoever had a queen had to go get an ice tub, like full body submerged, jump in the ice tub. <laughs> and then you're working out like that, and you're soaking wet. And he's just like, What is, what's his message? It's like, um, always be prepared for whatever comes. Like mm -hmm. it's really just a mindset thing. Like, if you cold, you, know, you just got to push through the workout. Who cares? Nobody else cares. Yeah, and then something that goes with that, I think it was the next time that we went in there, we were supposed to be running – Um, I think the, it was like the week after that week, we were supposed to be running our uh, conditioning test. Mm -hmm. And then we were all thinking, like, what's going on? We had the rollers out. And then I think it was the cards, right? Mm -hmm, the and card. then he took a group of people, and then they disappeared. And he took mm -hmm. another group of people. And I'm I'm on the inside, and the uh, thing's still stretching. Like, where are those guys going? And, and we come, out there running. Come like, to find out, they were outside running the test already, and we didn't know that. So we're thinking they're in the ice tub or hiding. And then once we went out there, and they told us we had to run the test, it was like, what? And then we came back inside, and then we found out they ran already. So yeah. it, was, it was a crazy Like, experience. we're on Oosti chilling. They're, the second group's out there running the test. Then they, they come in. Then the third group's out there running the test. So we're like, what's all going on? Like, what's going on? Man, I, I'm like, this is this is crazy to me. This is crazy to me. I've never heard that. I've never heard that before. Yeah. You, it takes a special – like, not every – I think that sounds great in theory, but it takes the right coach to be able to do that because you guys need to know that Ben loves you and has your back first. Like, if, if you think – if you don't mess with Ben, Coach Herbert, Coach Herb, this doesn't work. But you know right. that it, it's – the proof is now – here you are, 9-0, as we said. If you listen to Coach Herb, like, good things will come your way. Um, what Keon, like when you were a freshman, do you remember like the first lift, like your first exposure to this type of mindset with, with Coach Herb? 
I think I wouldn't even say when I first got here, it was on my visit. He took me in his little office and when he was talking to me, I could tell he had like a, a different vibe and, and I could I could definitely uh be accustomed to being around him. Like even when I first came there, I was like, this guy is he's he's really different and, and I like it. And I, I could really trust him and, and understand that he's there to do everything in my best interest. So whatever he tells me, I listen to at all times. And thing is, he doesn't change. Same thing? He doesn't change at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. like from the day I walked in the building, I don't think I've never I've seen a different type of coach her to this day. Like he's the same person every day, and I don't even think I've seen him miss a day either. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't miss a day of work. That's the, that's the the biggest challenge and the biggest respect, man. Like these strength coaches, I don't think people really realize. These dudes, my, my strength coach was is now the strength coach at Indiana, and I was calling Indiana, Wisconsin this weekend, Aaron Wellman. His alarm rings at 315 every single day since he was my strength coach, which is over a decade ago, and I know it started before that. Same thing every day, man. Every day that consistency is insane, right? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 315, so, nah. <laughs> 3.15 in the morning and be up for the whole day? Yeah. I got nah. some stories I'll have to tell you guys another time about it. It's, it is it is pretty <laughs> crazy. But uh, all right. So but but here's the funny thing is, you know, Keon, you you went to IMG, right, down in Florida. Rod, you're from Ohio. Mm -hmm. So the chances are between the two of you guys, you would have seen something like Herb. You haven't seen him. Keon, Keon I, I, we took a visit to IMG my senior year when Harbaugh was doing these spring tours. We went to IMG. I, I think it's a cool thing. It's a very different high school from what I grew up and experienced. What Can you tell the listeners, like, what, what is IMG like as a high school? What's playing football like for them down in Florida? Um, It's kind of like a – it's like a mini college, if, if I could say. Like, you're, you're in, a, like, a, your own campus – for, for the most part, um, there's people from all different different types of walks of life, all different types of countries. So I met a, a, a diverse amount of different people. And I think it, football wise, it's, it's helped me a lot. It's prepared me for, for college now, uh, playing against that competition. Um, it's basically like a small college. Like if you went to like a small college, but for high school, you got NFL coaches, you're learning from the best. So I think it was a great experience and it's helped me to this day now. Did you guys have training table down there? Training table? What do you mean? Like, like, did you have like team meals and stuff down there? Like, did you eat as a team down there? Uh, yeah, we we had as a, we had as a team at times. Um, there was a big cafeteria. All the different sports used it, but we definitely had our own team meals, like for games, um, all different types of stuff. Wait, yeah. So y'all flew on a plane as a team? Yeah, we flew <laughs> as a uh, as a team on a plane. It was like a it was basically college. We do everything the same, really. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's a mini college. Hey, that's what. Hey, I'm from Ohio too, Rod. That was not my yeah. experience. What was your what, what was what, so? What was it like for you in Ohio playing high school ball? Yeah, we got to break ball in Ohio now. All right, we people need to start talking about high school. I've been trying to tell him that he swears yeah. Ohio don't got no football. <sighs> the only football team we played from Ohio, I won. We won by like sixty. Who? Was who? This, do we who? Play? Bishop who? We played Bishop Sycamore in Ohio. That's their D2. <laughs> we played. Why are you guys um, playing D? You're IMG and you're playing D2? Right, why are you playing a D2 school? Oh. They're not D2 school. You I know promise. the promise. They, they had like, they're not D2 school. It's a high school, but they had a whole scandal on Netflix about it. We played another team in Ohio. I forgot the name. Wait, 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 wait. Bishop Sycamore? Is that the one that was a fake team? Yes. Yes. You played the fake team? Yes. <laughs> oh, dude, no, no, no. Time out. That, okay, we got to we gotta talk about this. <laughs> Hang yeah. on, bro. You played the, the – the, the, they, they weren't even in high school. They didn't even have a high school. They were a fake team. Yeah. So I didn't watch the Netflix documentary. Not yet. I should watch it. But some of the guys, like one of our quarterbacks said he knew their quarter, – their, uh, one of their players from like 2020. He graduated in 2020. And <sighs> it was like 2020 – it was 2022 at the time. So we're like – What's going on here? And then you can tell some of the guys looked older. They had like paint coming off the helmets, different jerseys on. It was a whole thing. And then we ended up playing them on ESPN as well. So it was yeah, it was a whole crazy thing. It was fun though. We we won. I got I, I caught an interception as well. So it was it was pretty fun. So you guys had a hunch, right? It's like this doesn't make sense, but no one really looked into it. It was like, no, no way are we gonna get no way is this actually happening, right? No way are they really trying this. 
Yeah, because they played some teams be the year before. They played a pretty big schedule the year before. So some of the guys, like, we were thinking that was a normal team. Until we start seeing some of the older guys looking a little funny and then the coaches – it was a it was a whole scandal. Or when did you thing. learn? Like when did like did you did you go back in the locker room and like have it like regroup and say this is this doesn't make sense? Or when when did you find out? Was it the same as all of us when the news broke? Um, I would say the same as all of us when the news broke. But we some of the guys were thinking about it, but we beat them so we beat them by like fifty or sixty. So we <laughs> we didn't really think too much of it. <laughs> Really okay, bro. That team, we don't claim that team in Ohio. All right, that, yeah. that team doesn't. That's work. not Ohio <laughs> ball. <man. laughs> you know De La Salle, huh? De La Salle, no, but we have a La Salle. Yes, we played the La Salle team. We played. Aren't they D two? They're from Columbus and they're D two. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, they're D two. D two teams. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. What is they, that's not the. That's not. Ohio. I can't even believe they're that the team. Like, I can't even believe. So it. yeah, like Division one's the best in Ohio, and then it's oh y'all, we we got it like. Um, groups it's like group one in like different sections and stuff like that i mean we can't control like i just came out there and played <laughs> rod come on tell tell them about high school ball what, what's, what's high school ball like in ohio regular we division one and we was about to go to state until we got canceled because of covid how many divisions are there a is lot a lot six or seven or I, I, we were d1 seven. too i don't know it gets yeah. it's a lot though. what high school yeah. did you go to pickerington north Pickerington oh, yeah. on, on the east side east, of Ohio. No, I seen no. My junior had three picks. Picks on Pick North. On Pick North, damn, yeah. No, we, <laughs> That's when we, um, had some, we had some tough Jack years. Sawyer but of course, there. who was That's when Jack Sawyer? Jack Sawyer. Yeah, Jack Sawyer. Yeah, he was playing. Bro, they put him at quarterback or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was playing yeah. quarterback against us too. You, so you the, picked him off three times. High school ball, bro, bro. Yeah, three times. Wait, so yeah, so, so, yeah. So Division six is the is the is the worst one. Yeah, yeah. It goes D D one is the so best. So how is D two can't be that bad? It's right under D one. I mean, it's a big gap, bro. It's a big it gap. It is a big gap. It's, it's Dude, D one D one D one like the Catholic schools. No one goes both ways. Like they'll have two kickers. They'll have a kicker for a kickoff and a field goal kicker. Mm -hmm. whole, whole whole they'll have eighteen dudes go D one. Eighteen dudes. Okay. I give North Jersey. We had something like that too. Like the the Catholic schools and the prep schools. Like at the top, they were. They were, I think they were like parochial. It, we call it like parochial A or B or something like that. I, like I know Virgin Catholic and like Berg yeah, like yeah, yeah, like, like my, my normal high school back at when I was at home, they would they would have smoked us if we played uh, up mm. there against those teams. So, yeah, they would they would beat us. <laughs> no, nah. high right. school ball in Ohio is good comp. Very I, I was trying to tell some of the dudes too because, like, you know, the, the big debate was like, what happens if Michigan, Michigan high school played Ohio high school? I'm like, bro, let me just tell you guys seriously. Let me tell you guys, Ohio high school is we do not get enough credit for Ohio high school, and some of the best mm -hmm. Michigan players come from Ohio. And and hey, hey, who's Jack Sawyer for the Michigan fans that may not know? You picked him off three times, Rob. Well, he was the mm -hmm. number one recruit in the country, <laughs> and he went there, and he plays at Ohio State. And you picked them off three times in high school, bro. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. There has been a few night games in the big house this year. And it started with Bowling Green. And then this past week was Purdue, NBC production. I'm looking at it and I'm just blown away by how insane that is. It seems so – like, I remember my first recruiting visit was the first ever night game against Notre Dame under the lights 2011. Mm. That was nuts. That was nuts. It was insane. And now I'm looking at it, and it's gone to another level. What's what's that like? Like, what do you feel in your in your spirit, in your soul, when you're getting ready to play in that game, when the music's blasting and the lights are turned on? What's it like playing in a night game in the big house? I mean, like you said, it's crazy, but – I'm going to be completely honest. The night game last year, no, my freshman year versus, um, was it Washington, was the best <sighs> night game I ever I was, was a part game. of. Like, I was, I played, I played, I started on a couple packages, but like the the atmosphere and the, the level of noise that was in that stadium that night was so different. Like, I remember it was a fourth down and they were so, it was like fourth and two. And Dax was like probably from here to maybe even, Probably about over there, not even that far. And I'm trying to yell like, "Yo, Dax, Dax!" <laughs> and I can't even hear myself talking. He, I, so I'm like, "Yeah, he can't even hear me." But like, 
it's great, especially being under the lights. It kind of takes you back to Friday Night Lights. Yeah, it's yeah. Like Saturday and more like you're on TV. You're really under the lights. You're in front of 110,000. So it's, it's what really song crazy. did they play when you guys first took the field? There was a song that got I can't remember that Washington game, the Washington game that you're talking. I can't remember, but that I was in that. I was looking around. I'm like, whoa, this was the and loudest the, I'd ever heard. Uh, it was hitting the pom poms. Uh, yeah, the maze out pom. I can't even remember. Didn't I want to say it was a. Uh, was it Mo Bamba? It was a song that was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Mo Bamba. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that'll turn up whole stadium. That'll get everybody was, going. Uh, yeah. Keon, what you think? um, like night night game wise, do we have any last year? We had some last year, but I think we had one that got the delay. Oh, yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii. I didn't really get yeah. the same feeling from last year to this year, but this year it, it was crazy. At least even coming out the tunnel and you see all the lights, it feels, it oh, feels yeah. great. And then once we get out there, then they got all the light shows and they turn the lights off, then it goes all blue. Mm -hmm. I, I like it a lot. I think we made a really big jump with the lights and stuff like that in the stadium. Mm -hmm. They made the night games even better. Man. There's something to be said too, like your body heat, like you're hot, like you're hot in the pads. And then that cool air hits you at night, like the cool mm -hmm. air hits you and the yellow pops. Like there's no other <laughs> color. It's yeah. just straight like maze in the stands. And the, I don't know, man, I, there's just, you make a play too. And there's like nothing else going, like no one has anything else to do that day. Like I love every game. I love every game. But when it's a night game, it's like people waited their whole day for this so every mm -hmm. play they go nuts. So like they shoot, Rod, you had a pick six to seal the game against Michigan State night game, right? That was a mm -hmm. night game. Pick, pick, not pick six, but pick. Not pick six, right? Pick, pick, pick. Yeah. yeah, that did it went it went stupid when I did that. Yeah, that was a night game. I forgot Michigan yeah. State was a night game. Yeah, that, that that's felt the extended really good, especially. Cheer. Yeah, especially because, like, I knew I should have had a pick earlier in that game, and then when I finally got the pick. And it was just going, it was just going nuts, bro. I can't even explain how I was feeling. Like you could see if you watch the TV copy, how you could tell how I was feeling the way I was running to the sideline. And I threw, <laughs> I, I think I took my helmet off and I threw it. And I was just yelling at Coach Bender. I said, "I told you I was gonna get another one because it was like it's, it's, it feels so good." All right, what's the best feeling? Is it a, is it a big hit or is it a pick? Pick. pick. It depends because if it's a big hit, like. You you really rock the dude, and the crowd just and you standing there in the crowd going crazy, and it's that. But I think I still say pick though, because it's like a big hit. You could get a big hit multiple times, but a pick yeah. is like you really made the play, like you gave the offense the ball type. Mm -hmm. and third and back. Okay, pick or third and eight. They run a slant, and you saw the formation, recognize it, and you went and popped the dude, and and it and the ball went out. My, that third name. Yeah, that third name might just Because if that. you recognize it first, you see it, and then you go make the play, it adds so much more to that play. It's going to mean a lot to you. Mm -hmm. I'm getting fired up. Just I'm visualizing the ball go, and then I'm visualizing the other 10 dudes just get hype when they hear the pad crack, too, and, like, the <laughs> whole stance go crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, I, I, so, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um as we wind this down, I just want to hit on this because we got a big time matchup. I mean, two of the best teams in the country, Penn State, Michigan. You guys are going on the road. Penn State's atmosphere is phenomenal. First mm -hmm. off, what, what's it like? Is that, you know, is that one of the best atmospheres that you guys are looking forward to playing in? And, and you know, what's that like to play in such a high octane matchup? Well, let me get it first. I haven't played in it personally yet. I know he has, but my I think it, I was a recruit. And that time where Michigan had to call that timeout, you were here. Oh, oh yeah. At game. Uh, and at that time, playing Obama to start that game, right? Yeah. yeah. And in the stands, I'm like, this is the, this is the craziest game I've ever been to when I was a recruit. So I can't imagine how it's going to be once we get to go there this year. So, uh, I, I think it would be different if it was nighttime because yeah. when we played them two years ago when we went, it was rocking, but it wasn't like rocking to where like you see the you see that video get played probably all the time oh yeah and, like, it makes you think okay maybe it's gonna be like this this time but i think it might be like that because uh just this year how everything's surrounding our program right now and then just just the name we have and how we're undefeated like they could ruin our season so i think it's gonna be like that yeah and i mean look the way the way the game went last year like those guys are gonna be fired up right like they they they, they want and they know too i mean the ohio state game like they got no room for error 
Right. Um, I agree, though. The night game, it's just it, it's like an anticipation that builds and then it just like explodes. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a matchup like that. It's going to be popping off regardless. Um, You've been to Penn State, right? Like you played at Penn State. Do you remember the 2013 game where it was uh, Hail Mary, back to back Hail Mary, Allen Robinson? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was my freshman year, my first ever start. Did they have it like when you walked out the locker room, you're walking under the stands. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that because they oh, be yeah. yelling through the uh, they yell through the gates. I like that. that Dude, yeah. I, I it's hard to describe, but I've always loved road games more. Like it was way easier. Like I don't know, it was always when you go on the road and they're yelling at you, and you and you can convince yourself like. Nah, dude, I'm about to eat on you guys today. Like it's over. Like that's that's like the best feeling in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. All right, last question, man. So uh, approaching a thousand wins, are you guys aware of where the program's at historically? The chance for Michigan to to get to a thousand wins this year? Oh, uh, honestly, I low-key just puked it today. I was walking up the yeah. ramp and I see nine nine eight. I said, "Oh, we only need two more for a thousand. What's that mean? I think it means everything to the state of Michigan and to the program as well. And then it means a lot to me. And I know for sure for the rest of the team, mm -hmm. being a part of that, we'll be a part of the history forever. of Michigan forever. Thousand wins. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. We're, yeah. Nobody else has touched a thousand wins. So that's like what world national history. Yeah. Yeah. Sustained greatness. Really. I mean, it's the first team, first team ever to hit a thousand wins. I mean, that's, that's remarkable to, to, to sustain greatness for that. That amount of time, I think, you know, Michigan. If you've been a part of it, you uh, you understand the history, and and to make history once again is is super special. So, looking forward to you guys. I mean, a chance to get nine 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 this weekend, man. It'll be a good matchup. I know we'll all be tuning in. Um, but really, man, thank you guys so much for your time. I know it's a busy season. I know you guys just wrapped up practice, um, and, and to take a couple minutes out of your day to connect with us and the fans, it's, it's super appreciated. And for our listeners, please let us know, uh, you know, reach out to these guys on social media and tell them thank you. And if you want to support, which I would suggest, make sure you head to championcircleufm.com. There's the link right there above my pen, championcircleufm.com. Find out how you can support these athletes so we can keep enjoying some good, good times, man. It's been an awesome, awesome time. So, guys, thanks so much. Can't wait to see you uh, take the field this weekend. Um, rooting for you down the stretch, man. You guys are so, so awesome. appreciate the time. If you can hoop, hit Keon up, playing one-on-one. <laughs> Don't worry about this guy. Man. Keon, who can what, – what do you mean? Is Keon – he's Keon the, hooper? the hooper. Don't let him fool y'all. He's not he a two-sport guy. He can hoop. Wow. Half decent at basketball, man. Why are you being humble, bro? That's normally the point. Why is it that there's some about safeties, too? Justin Simmons, who I played with in Denver. Hooper. Hooper. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're number one on the team. Is there anyone that's messing with you? Uh, Will's up there. Yeah. I wouldn't want to just throw myself at one, but Will's really good. Uh, J Josh Wallace is pretty good. I just got to know him on the basketball court. TJ's pretty good. It's a couple different guys. So, but I'll say I'm, I'm up there for sure. Who's really Man, bad? bro? I say that whole freshman class, him, Will, Colson, Alex, Orgy, Alex Orgy, Denegal. We went like last summer, we went to the IM and they had their own team and they would not break that team up. So he was like, okay, we can get our own team and beat them. Man, they was throwing lobs, dunking. <laughs> he dunked on, um, was it you? No, it was Orgy. Orgy Orgy's dunked on Mike, Mike Moe. Moe yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what the locker room was like after that, bro. Like you can, you can never get live that down if you get dunked on. In front of everybody, too. In front of everybody. That was wow. Just... Wow. All right. Well, who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? Hey, hey, hey. Maybe, yeah, maybe you get a run with the basketball team. You go go you go handle business this year, see if you can get another <laughs> ring, bro. Why not? Yeah, yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> All right, fellas. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Appreciate, I appreciate you. you. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys.